Yamaha is well known here stateside for their incredible range of motorcycles, ATVs, watercraft, and pianos. We often forget about their massive contribution to the automotive side of things as well. Yamaha was instrumental, get, get it, it's instrumental, in the creation of the Lexus LFA supercar and its heavenly sounding V10 that you hear in all of my intros. They also helped Lexus create the growly 2UR GSE 5 liter V8 found in the LC500. And let's not forget, Toyota owns a huge portion of Yamaha, and that has led to their involvement in tons of TRD upgrades as well. And I can't help but to mention a childhood favorite of mine, the Ford Taurus Show, with a Yamaha V6 and a Mazda 5-speed manual transmission. But when it comes to the future of Yamaha, the multi-talented Japanese company has been a little quiet. Well, until now. Yamaha recently announced its work on new electric motors that could very well accelerate the EV revolution. And in today's video, we'll break down Yamaha's new electric motors and discuss how they can permeate the entire motoring world. Welcome back, luxurious fleet. My name is Kirk, and this channel is dedicated to Japanese autos. Subscribe, hit the bell icon, so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos on Japanese electrification. So over at Yamaha's global motor page, Yamaha Motor begins accepting orders for high performance electric motor prototype customized units can be produced rapidly for cars and other vehicles. Now this was back in February 4th of 2020. I just found out about this today because they just released a brand new YouTube video and I'll be sprinkling those clips from that video into this one. Little has changed, but it looks like they're just ramping things up. So this high performance electric motor prototype that is capable of producing the industry leading high power density for automobiles and other types of vehicles. The compact unit generates up to 200 kilowatts in output. That's about 268 horsepower thanks to a high efficiency segment conductor and advanced casting and processing technologies that Yamaha has cultivated over many years. Now I have a spreadsheet we'll get into after we're finished with this article that is going to detail their potential product stack for these electric motors that can be mass produced and mass ordered by various different automotive companies around the world. Yamaha will customize a prototype to specific needs of individual customers and deliver in short time spans utilizing production technology that the company flexibly adapts to its various product groups, including motorcycles. And that's what they started with. They started developing this small electric motor for motorcycles. And they're like, Holy cow, we can actually make this for any type of vehicle. Yamaha expects to deepen its knowledge of evolving market needs by adapting the motor to the requirement of individual customers. This is the initiative part of Yamaha Motors transforming mobility business strategy and quick Zach Morris time out here. Toyota's no longer a automotive company. Their whole identity now is becoming a mobility company. And that was gonna be on full showcase at the Tokyo Summer Olympics that has been postponed till next year. Yamaha being closely tied with Toyota, of course, is about this mobility buzzword right now. So this is the smallest motor that we know of. This is going to be in electric vehicles such as motorcycles. And then this is their range topping. Uh, dual motor, there's actually a motor on this side and on this side. And this will produce up to 200 kilowatts or 268 horsepower. A few more details here if you want to glance at it, water cooling or oil cooling. Of course, it's an interior permanent magnet synchronous motor. And a couple of notes before we head over to the spreadsheet. This thing sounds incredible. I'm going to pause real quick so you can listen to it. So Yamaha's engines have always been tuned for incredible noise. It's, they're always about engaging the driver with the sound, with the feel of the engine. Now with EVs, that's a huge problem because electric motors have very, very little noise. They kind of are known for their whine. Well, this is the best sounding electric motor I've ever heard. At the beginning of the sound or the beginning of the spinning of the motor, it's a very high pitched 
wine that gets higher and higher. So anything that increases in pitch or in volume over time, it kind of puts you on your edge of your seat, right? It's like a movie. And we all love hearing the like internal combustion engines, well, most people, not all of us. The V10, for example, hearing that thing wind out is one of the most satisfying things if you're a gearhead. And this EV, so like I said in the beginning of what, I wanna call it the rev range, but that's not really applicable, but when it starts spinning, you have this high pitched whine, and then as it gains speed, you have this synchronous or harmonious second noise that comes in, it's very, very deep undertones, and that starts dominating the auditory experience. And so Yamaha and Lexus have been perfecting this in the LC500 and the LFA, and that's one of the reasons why Jeremy Clarkson, his favorite vehicle of all time, possibly, unless something else beat it, was the Lexus LFA. It was just so raw, so visceral, and you felt so connected to the car because it hit all of the senses. EVs aren't going to be able to do that quite as well, but leave it to Yamaha to kind of pick up the torch where us motoring fans want to hear some excitement that's going on. Secondly, this thing is super compact. They're going to be able to stuff it in just about anything. So a variety of applications, watercraft, motorcycles, cars, and with the compact nature of it, that allows you guys to have bigger batteries in the vehicles. It allows you also to have more cargo capacity. So, oh, and also you have more room for things like spare tires. Everyone wants a spare tire, at least as far as I'm concerned, unless you're out on a track racing, people like the peace of mind of having a spare tire. A small electric motor will free up more interior space for your spare tire. And then for a lot of us enthusiasts out there, there's the big craze going on right now. Scotty Kilmore kept talking about his EV conversion of his 94 Celica. And that's what people are really interested in. And these small compact motors would allow just about anyone to drop them into any car and allow this to take over the propulsion system. Okay guys, it's spreadsheet time. Get your snacks and drinks and let's head over. Starting with the single motors on the small end, single motors are likely only to be for motorbikes and aquatic applications. Now they could adapt them to automotives as well, but the prototype they showed of the dual motor makes a ton of sense one on each side of the center so that it can act as a differential. And then you have the small dual. So that's what I was just talking about. One on each side, pretty much one powering each wheel. That is incredible technology that I didn't expect to see this soon. So dual motors at each axle for cars, ATVs, and then a dual motor all wheel drive possibly for a Tron-like or a Batman motorbike type vehicle where they could have a big fat electric motor, relative fat electric motor because it's gonna be small on a motorbike. And then you could put a smaller one up front so you have all, all wheel drive capability. That's pretty cool. For the small all wheel drive, you have quad motors. So you have one for each wheel. And this is almost as similar to in wheel motors that Rivian is playing with and that Lexus gave us a glimpse with of the LF30 prototype, except those wheels are, those motors are actually inside the wheels but having an, an individual motor for each wheel, like how Yamaha has demonstrated, makes a lot of sense to me too. And I only see this application being for automobiles and maybe ATVs if they wanna get really powerful. But because of these power numbers that you would get from a quad motor, two on each axle, 188 horsepower here. And how am I getting these pound-feet of torque? Because there's no uh, pound-feet of torque or newton meters of torque that was ever posted. Well, if I skip down here to the large all-wheel drive here, and this would be from the announcement that they had back in February, they said up to 200 kilowatts. The recent video, the recent YouTube video says 150 kilowatts, but I still think they have a 200 kilowatt motor available and they can write. Remember, they can custom make these motors for different automakers. But looking at this large all-wheel drive motor here so two motors in the back and then two motors in the front that gives you 400 kilowatts that's 536 horsepower and when i heard 536 horsepower i'm like that number sounds oddly familiar and i just mentioned the lexus lf30 concept lexus actually announced power and torque numbers for that vehicle and they said it was going to have 536 horsepower coincidence that it has the identical kilowatts or horsepower output as a potential all-wheel drive quad motor Yamaha. I 
think that's more than coincidental. I think that was on purpose. Now we also have torque numbers from that LF30. So Lexus said it has 700 Newton meters of torque and 516 pound feet of torque. So I extrapolated all those numbers down the motor size and scale, dual quad and single. So you have all your torque numbers here. Now it's not gospel, take it with a grain of salt, but I think it's pretty accurate based off of my gut feeling. And I'm just gonna focus mainly on these dual and all wheel drive. The singles guys are gonna be more for your motorcycles and maybe aquatic implementations. So small dual, whether it's a front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, you can get 100, or sorry, 94 horsepower and about 90 pound feet of torque. So this would be for budget EVs, but you could put one of these small dual motors in the front and one of these small dual motors in the back and that gives you 188 horsepower all-wheel drive and 180 pound-feet of torque which is pretty darn respectable. That would be a lot of fun in a small car, a small hatch, something like that. It would get me pretty excited to drive. Now I'm going to skip over this for now and we're going to go to single medium-sized motors which like I said, are probably only gonna be motorcycles and aquatic. But if you look at the dual here, now we're talking about some pretty respectable power here. 201 horsepower and 193 pound-feet of torque. You put that in a all-wheel drive where you match the front and the rear, same horsepower-wise, you're at 400 horsepower on two medium dual motor setups, so quad motor total, and almost 400 pound-feet of torque. Now the hybrid here is you put one of these dual motors this 201, you put that in the back to power the rear wheels, and then you use this 94 right here, small dual, and you combine them so you have a little bit less power for the front wheels, a little bit more power for the rear wheels for a very sporty setup that gives you all-wheel drive, but definitely a rear-wheel drive focus, and you get 295 horsepower and 283 pound-feet of torque. Now for the range-topping model, these would probably be in trucks or luxury vehicles or really high-end sports cars. Or you could put one of these fat single motors in the back of an, a motorcycle, 134 horsepower, instant power and torque on a motorcycle would be crazy. And then why not put one of those single motors? Now I'm just getting too excited. So you get about 180 horsepower all wheel drive on a motorcycle. Ooh, that gets my engine revving. Which isn't that Yamaha's, Yamaha's slogan? Revs your heart, same thing. But the large dual motor, 268 horsepower per axle. And then you double that if you want the all wheel drive. That gets us to the LF 30, 536 horsepower. Now you could also put one of these large dual motors with one of these medium dual motors and you get the 469 horsepower for a more sporty like experience with rear wheel drive power focus. Now we don't know when these motors are going to be available to manufacturers, but the fact that they've come out with two press releases in a half of a year, February and then July, or are we August now? I think it came out late it came out late July. So in about six months they came out with two press releases for these motors. Yamaha has a reputation that they really don't debut or unveil something until it's pretty much ready for consumption. So I would expect these motors to be ready in the next six to 12 months. The first customers I would see would be Toyota and Lexus for sure. And then probably Subaru because they're sharing the ETNJ platform with Toyota and Lexus. Mazda, Suzuki, both of them would be in there because Toyota is pretty much the the father company of all those other companies. Yes, they don't own the majority of those companies, but they're a huge influencer on everything they do. So it's exciting to see some horsepower numbers, the scalability of it. They, like Yamaha could, with this compact technology, I don't know if anyone has something similar, if you guys know of another electric motor builder company that has something that's this compact, this power dense. They're saying it's world-class leading power density per volume, per package. So I don't know what else to say. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the comments on this one. This is gonna be a lot of fun to interact with you guys down there. And if you guys love the content of the channel, feel free to click the join button. That's gonna help me out just a little bit and you guys get access to badges, emojis, live streams, etc., exclusive content too. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video and until next time, peace out.